Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you my top 5 tips for mixing your beats in Ableton Live. So if you noticed, last week I didn't upload a beat and that's because I was in Amsterdam on holidays with my friends. So sorry about that, but uh, it's coming to the end of the summer now so the videos should be back to normal. Uh, I was thinking of changing the days to Saturday because I'm recording this on a Friday and I'm gonna be able to upload this on uh, Saturday, tomorrow. Uh, it just works out a lot easier. I have uh, stuff to do during the week and then on a Saturday, I can just upload my video, edit it on the Friday and it all works out very easy. So hopefully I expect videos every Saturday, if not twice a week. So with all that said, let's hop right into the video and get to Ableton Live. Okay, so here we are in Ableton Live. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you around the beat. So as you can tell, if you've seen my other beats, it's pretty standard uh, layout. So I'm just gonna go through it quickly. So here is my kick and AOA pattern. So a distorted 808 and a thumpy kick. Then we have my claps, snares and some uh, rolls, uh, percussion and some claps. So quite a few elements there, so we'll get on to mixing them later. And of course we have our cymbals down here. So some hi-hats, half-timed hi-hats, some open hi-hats and some other open hi-hats. My signature tag with the glass. And finally the melody down here, which is made up of some Electra X pads, uh, plucks, and some Onister pads. So I've bounced them down to uh, get rid of the clicks and save some CPU because when I'm recording, it uses a lot of CPU. So I'll give you a listen here. We have the side chain. So kind of like Nav uh, and Metro Boomin's perfect timing kind of beat. So what I'm going to start off by doing is taking all the mixing elements that I've done to this beat uh, while I was creating it off and basically bringing you to the start of uh, the beat. So obviously I mix as I go along, uh, mix as I go along through the beat. Just for teaching purposes, I am just going to reset the whole project. So I'm going to go along and take the levels, reset them. Set the close hi hat, the pads, and uh, get the kicks. Take that off. So, as you can tell, the project has changed both visually and audibly. I'll let you listen now. Now that's actually kind of hard to listen to. As a person who's been mixing for about two and a half years making music, it really it's really hard to listen to music that you know has potential to sound good, but it just, it, a small few effects, the five tips I'm gonna show you today would make this beat so much better. And guess what, I'm gonna show you. So, a simple thing that you wouldn't expect from a mixing tutorial, is um, labeling. Now you might be thinking, Luke, this isn't technical, but I think it's a key factor to mixing. So labeling is a general way to say, uh, labeling all these uh, little bits here and my channels here, my groups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through what my uh, process is. Again, I do all this uh, as I work on the beat, but it's just for teaching it. What I do is I label all my drums green and all my uh, like kind of musical elements blue. And a quick way to do this is just highlight it all, right click on any block and select green. So it doesn't have to be green, uh, it can be any color you want, so it can be yellow, whatever. I just like to my, keep mine green, always done it two and a half years, just doing it all the time. So I'll go down here, my pads blue then I'll go down to this say my tags keep them yellow now that's brilliant what I'm gonna do is go the extra mile 
go along to each of my groups uh, holding the command right click that label them green go down here hold the shift click to the bottom green 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 pads are blue pads are blue all the channels tags are yellow and these channels are yellow so before and after you can tell it's much easier it's more more it's much more inviting and also this will help if you collaborate with someone so if you collaborate with someone uh, if you send them over a project with again a terrible layout everything's all over the place they'll be messaging saying hey uh, where's the snare I can't find it and you'll have to open your phone and message them and say okay this snare is here 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 instead of just having this laid out really fast quick and easy get the job done okay so the second tip of this video is leveling your beat so I'll play the beat again and I'll show you what's happening so if you listen to uh, the beat before and after uh, that might say, sound okay but I'll tell you now the hi-hats over here and the snares do not have to be as loud as that kick so people always ask me, hey Luke, how do you get your kicks so punchy? The only reason my kicks are punchy is because it's the loudest thing in the mix. So I'll go along here, get my kick, and I'll mute this channel here. And what I'll do is go along here, play this. And what I do is I decrease it by five, see if that helps. So already, all you can tell, the kick seems a bit more punchier, the claps seem a bit weak, but we'll get to that later on. Again, we'll go down to our cymbals. So kicks even get more punchier, 808's really easy to hear. Go down to the pads, etc, etc. 7.5. And the glass here, this is going to be quite loud, so I'm going to turn it down to minus 10. So already, before and after, the beat sounds a lot better and we haven't touched an EQ, compression or anything. But what we're going to do right now is move on to our EQ. So we're going to go along to each channel and see... The frequencies so what I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to do is go along to my claps my snares and all these here and I'll put an EQ on the group so if you don't know how to make a group I'll just take two out here and say I wanted to add these to the group I'm going to hold I'm going to click my perk hold down shift drag it over here and it's in the group now and basically what you can do is you can apply effects to all these instead of going along and putting each effect on each channel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look open this arrow so I can see a bigger picture <laughs> So, the big, big, big no-no here is that young chop snare. So if I, I can instantly hear, that's how long I've been doing this uh, producing thing. I can hear instantly what's happening. So even though you can't hear it, it's not like a kick drum. It hasn't that blow-in rumble. There's still low frequencies in there, um, but you don't need them because the main kind of character of this snare is right here this so if I cut this out and here that character that snare is gone but the low end is not adding anything in fact it's actually taking away from other elements so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a low cut and just slowly bring it up so around 150 Hertz seems to do the trick and I'll just take this here so there we go a little more space maybe even 175 because maybe the snares will sound a slight bit weaker but you can already tell the kicks and snares are going to mix together better and we're going to do the 
same thing for the symbols. Now the symbols, you can really take the uh, EQ up really hard because again, these do not need any low end. So you can really bring it up. So 1000. And just even check if I'm missing out anything. And all you can see is a bit of rumble down here and you do not need that. So it tells them. And then go down to the pads. And this is gonna have a lot of low frequencies as well. And another way I can do is use the EQ3. Instead of getting caught up in visualizing, looking at thing, you can just use this. And it, what I did for a while is use this EQ to stop me kind of obsessing with the actual image of the EQ and start actually just listening to the audio. So maybe say 150 and maybe bring this down and just stop just right after you think it's not doing anything to the sound. The sound isn't changed. The smash again. And with most of these things it's just about cutting low frequencies. So even 250. Okay, so that's our IQ. Next thing is compression. So you can tell up here, our kicks after actually losing a bit of punch. It's quite soft at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is whip out my trusty uh, glue compressor. So I'm gonna type in drum parallel. This preset is amazing, I don't know how people don't use it more, but all I've been doing is, is using this constantly on my drums and it always makes them sound really, really punchy. I'm gonna take the attack up to 30, uh, put my dry weight to zero, and then slowly. Then I'm going to go down to my actual kick, apply some more compression. So we get that clipping effect. So kicks already after getting very, very way more stronger. So we're going to do the same thing. Compress some hi-hats. Compress our hits, sorry. And just a quick tip, make sure to put your EQ after the compressor, just in case it adds some frequencies to the low end. I'm just gonna mute this and slowly bring them in. Same thing to our symbols. Have this preset here. So here is where the compression chains, we just can't use the drum uh, parallel. What I'm going to use is the OTT. This is an amazing little thing. So what it does is basically over compresses it over the top. So it's, it's, you have to use it in a small amount. You can't just do this because it'll sound like crazy. Sound like crap, sorry. So it kind of brings out the, the higher frequencies without kind of uh, taking away from uh, all of the sound if you take it on 50. Um, basically one, uh, half of the signal is basically crazily compressed and then some of, uh, half of it is normal. Uh, we're gonna add some reverb just to this quickly. Put the EQ in front. Some ping pong. And 
The last touch we have here is some sidechain compression. So I think I've covered it in most of the videos, but if you haven't seen any of my other videos, you'll know that sidechaining, uh, no, if you have seen my other videos, you'll know sidechaining is a big thing to me. And again, a lot of the times uh, I hear beats, the melodies are cool, but the kick isn't just punchy enough. And you need that punch because people associate that with good beats. So what I'm gonna do is gonna turn on the beat, set the input kick, and slowly bring this down. So my actual melody is not loud enough. I'm just gonna add some high frequencies here. I feel like I can turn down my levels. And the big thing about mixing is you can't just apply these um, kind of effects and just do it without listening to music. It's obviously a process of every beat's different and as you work, you go along, you apply different effects. Um, so we have the sidechain here. There's sidechain on the 808, but that's already a preset. And my glass, my tag, that doesn't need any compression. The final tip of this video is panning. So panning in Ableton is quite simple and I only do it with a certain amount of instruments. So my rule of thumb is most of my drums are gonna be in the center and my melodies are gonna be wide. So what I'm gonna do is go along here and listen to each aspect of this, uh, this group of pads. I'm just gonna loop where there's no sidechain. So you can hear that's a really main part of this sound. Then we have a small Rhodes. Uh, so these are two soft sounds. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this 15 right, 15, 15 left, 15 left. And I'm gonna leave this piano in the middle. But what I can do is have this float around the area. So I can, basically what it's gonna do is gonna slowly go around left to right automatically and you can set the rate so I let this set the rate to around a bar so if I put the amount you can really hear it which is obviously too much so adding a bit of uh, image de uh, imaging to the pads have made them seem a bit more wide and it makes it a bit more appealing to listen on the headphones. So as you can tell by the end of this video, what we started off with is a completely gray and terrible sounding beat. The idea was nice, but the actual beat itself, the whole uh, mix of it really wasn't shining through. So what we did is some simple things. We leveled out the beat, added some EQ, compression, compa uh, and the actual synths and what came out was a really clear and precise version of our beat and it's important to get the mix sound right because many people think when you send away a beat to a mastering service or to another a engineer say a rapper's engineer they can make it sound a lot better but no engineer can mix a wow file you need to do that himself or else you have to get someone else to mix it for you but mixing is so simple that you really don't have to pay these crazy amounts of money unless you really 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 want the best mix in the world but most of the time you don't you just need simple tips like this to get your mix sounding really really good so that's it for this video guys i really hope you enjoyed uh, i hope you uh, find these tips useful uh, let me know uh, what was your favorite tip. I don't think this is going to be the last mixing video I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is maybe in the future come up with five more tips for you and uh, see if I can make another video for you. Leave a comment below if you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what kind of other videos you want to see and I'll see you in the next one.